Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jeff. You can call me Heyfro. I sell things and pop culture is not dead. Collectibles are not dead. Woke up to all these sales. It is Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning? Yeah. Uh, this Deadpool uh, poster sold for 36 including shipping. I was giving you a bird's eye view. Uh, this Supergirl comic sold for $12 shipped. Gizmo, this is in the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe. This is actually a consignment. Uh, I got a guy, he gives me comics, and it's 50-50 after eBay fees. It's the only way I would do consignment. Uh, this sold for 13 shipped. This was 8 shipped. This is, wait nine shipped pretty doo-doo i was hoping to maybe upsell him you know what i do i have no idea what this is by the way what i like to do sometimes is i will give a new non-returning customer a deal in hopes of you know either turning them into you know i've got like a like marketing that i put into my packages maybe turn them either into a direct customer or you know maybe I can upsell them like I did with this one these Helsing DVDs this was 23 shipped and then he added this manga clamp manga for 12 so you know getting my $16 original item uh, per purchase total up to about 28 29 dollars uh, these X-Men it's a set of three the chaos engine I accepted an offer for uh, $28 including shipping. I just picked these up a couple weeks ago. Uh, pretty, pretty cheap at a thrift store. Uh, they, somebody must have donated a massive collection of different, I bought a bunch of Star Trek things that haven't even gotten listed and some, I can't remember what the other franchise was. Uh, and this is the winner of the day of all things. Winterly, you might be interested in this. I know that you're a big Disney fan. And for anybody else looking, you know, garage sales, I thought this was garbage, to be honest with you. I found I found this in, in, our, in our basement, and I thought it was, I don't know, I pulled it out. I don't really know much about this. This sold for, for uh, $40 plus shipping, and it's, and it's kind of beat. Like, it's beat. So, I mean, if you can find me these Disney dollars... I mean, it's it's trash. I can, I can only imagine what a nice one would go for. Uh, the like I can't even remember what I called it. Like Simba, did you just go you just go on YouTube and put like Disney dollar Simbas and any you know, So this this was the winner of the day so far. But all of these sales were overnight sales or offers that I've got or in the morning. It's it's like 10 a.m. now. So I'm just I just wanted to. It's been a while since I've been able to show you some things live like this because normally I just don't get this many orders. But things have been starting to pick up. Things are starting to feel, for me, um, a little normal. I'm going to get these packaged up. I'm going to show you a couple locals that I've got going on. And uh, then we'll start, the, we'll start the real video. He was made to play Deadpool. He really was. All right, so yesterday somebody messaged me about this from a place called Kelowna. It's a few hours, well, it's more than a few hours away. And he was like, so this is like 30, 40 by 22, and he wanted to know if I could ship it. Now, I would do it. <laughs> I didn't really want to do it. Um, he offered me 200 all in. I said I'd do 225 if if um, this is by the way this is Fish the band Fish this is from their Rift cover art from the album uh, I'm a, I'm a big Fish fan to be honest with you and I remember I remember seeing this kind of out of the corner of my eye and you know I I knew this picture and then I kind of did a double take and I kind of backed up and I was like oh I gotta buy this I mean I gotta buy this just for myself for now kind of enjoy it for a while anyhow long story short he's actually coming to vancouver in two weeks for for a, a, a concert and 
he's gonna he's gonna buy this from me so i'm happy i'm happy it's going uh this this was actually a promo for record store owners back in the day never really meant to be intended for, for the public it's got a few creases in it it's not perfect perfect but it's it's pretty it's just it's awesome it's an awesome piece so that's gonna sell in a couple weeks when he's when he comes over uh he definitely for sure wants it he, and uh so i just wanted to show it to you in case i get busy and i forget just because i think it's an awesome piece um this little home decor piece is gonna sell tomorrow um not much but it was i didn't pay anything for it, it was my uh my daughter-in-law's when they were moving um okay this is cool this is a repeat customer i don't remember if i showed you guys the smurf hat that the guy bought locally he bought it he's buying it for a father's day gift because it has papa smurf knows best he's back for a little bit more he's buying these two new kids hats now out of out of all of these obviously i don't have that on ebay i wasn't i would i would probably have gotten more for it uh that's that's selling for 175 if i had a bigger audience pool to pick from probably would have gotten more but i really just did not want to ship that so anyhow so this so these were on this this was on a new uh, ebay on a new on a new kid set that uh, stuff that i have so i pulled that down so he wanted this and he bit on my uh my pins he's picking up that that's funny <laughs> that's funny so he's getting uh ten dollars a pin buy five get six jack this is for you a little inside joke that we have <laughs> so yeah so he's he's paying 30 for these and, and 50 for these so yeah that's a nice little uh repeat customer with local another another uh reason to try to establish relationships with people locally they come back okay i wish i wanted to share this story this is uh, i literally just finished sunday's video and for the video i came downstairs to my hats and i was looking for a hat that i wanted to wear for the video because uh, my hair is a mess and for some reason i picked this hat up not because i wanted to wear it because I saw it there and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, I don't even remember buying it. And then it sold. Like, this happens to me all the time. I'll pick an item up in my inventory. I'll just look at it or I'll be downstairs and I'll like make eye contact. Well, you can't make eye contact with an item. And then it immediately sells. It's just, does that phenomenon happen to you guys? Uh, Lenio uh I or leo i don't even know i never even noticed this cute little button here but uh this sold for 20 bucks uh plus shipping all right it is wednesday morning and i just dropped off that clock that sailor moon clock the other day that i showed you actually i think i filmed it oh well anyhow that did sell and i am accepting an offer locally for this, this i bought this last week i showed you guys paid a buck and a half and I'm selling for 20 local I could probably squeeze a little bit more out on eBay but I'm out today and sometimes it's better to sell things cheaper local for you know saving the fees and you know everything that you sell everything that you have listed on eBay every time you have an opportunity to sell it locally that just frees up your daily allotted sales numbers for something else to sell that's the way i look at it and uh yeah so this is going to sell for 20 i'm on my way there right now all righty all righty then everybody it is now wednesday two and i need to get this video done really quick uh we're going to go over some interesting information that uh, uh fellow reseller uh, has put together. I'm going to tell a story that correlates with that. We're going to go over some what sold and we're going to go over uh, a feedback thread in the last video that I thought was worth talking about. A little bit of drama, little, little bit of drama. Um, people just don't get me. 
All right, where to start? Where to start? Let's start with the uh, let's start with the drama. Let's get that out of the way. And uh, you know, this was in the video that I did. The sooner you realize you are not in control of your eBay sales, the better off you will be. Now, I stand behind that title. And uh, some you know, couple there's a couple comments in here that they're not really getting the gist of what I'm I'm saying. Um, so I kind of want to spell it out a little bit so there's no uh, misunderstanding. Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back to April. Pre-April, we were all doing things, right? We were, we, were, we were doing business. We were thrifting, reselling, selling, shipping, rinse, repeat, blah, 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 blah. And then eBay changed something. And then a, a mass number amount of resellers have uh, re announced or not announced, but basically they, they were they were talking about how they, they've been hit with massive reductions in their sales up to 50 to 60 percent or more. Same thing has happened before. It happened, you know, things there's changes in the platform that we have no control over. That was my point. My point is if you are only on one platform, I wasn't even complaining about eBay uh, in, in my last video. I was just, I'm looking out for myself and I'm looking out for you guys. And I'm trying to, to motivate, you know, you guys to, if you're not already, to take steps to not ha be so vulnerable as a reseller. The, the, the story that I'm going to tell is actually going to tie into this as well. It's always interesting and awesome when uh, things start to connect and there's little synchronicities. I like that. So uh, Cole Williams says, so if your theory is correct that if you listed brand new iPhones for $50, your sales would be limited and you'd only sell a few a day. Not the case. Uh, e eBay puts eyeballs on things that sell fast and are priced right. 90 day sell through rate is not fast. One day, two days is fast. List items in high demand and you will sell. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Number one, nobody is getting truckloads of, of new iPhones that they can sell on eBay. It's just not happening. Um, in fact, the, the immediate response to that by Ace was ridiculous argument. So you're saying eBay is going to show high priced purses, shoes, smartphones, and golf balls, gold, gold bars, sorry. Uh, to someone looking for an antique watch, eBay has been doing fantastic for 25 years selling these so-called lower sell-through rate items. The only way your argument holds water is if suddenly every collector and purveyor of goods besides high-end items stopped buying together. You know it's BS and we know it's BS. I know it. I know it's BS. It is BS. But for, I mean, for Ace's argument as well, in addition to the fact nobody is getting truckloads and truckloads and endless and endless supply of iPhones to sell on eBay. And if you suddenly came across a storage locker that you bought and it was just filled to the brim with iPhones and you started selling them, eBay would freeze your account. It's happened to people in the community, in our community. And they would want receipts. So your argument doesn't hold any weight. You would, you, I, I do, I do, I mean, I, unless somebody does it, we'll never know exactly what happened. But I bet you your account would get shut down and you would have to show receipts for these. And if you bought a storage locker, it's not going to be itemized. I don't, I don't think so. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> so if you can't prove where you bought these uh, outside of, you know, having an itemized receipt, I would have to think that eBay would not let you reinstate your account. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, Cole says, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying eBay is going to give traffic to items with the highest chance of converting. List items that sell through fast and items sell. The old standard of a 90 day sell through being acceptable is dead. My, my sell through goal is five to seven days. Two weeks is decent and a month for me is an old listing and that's okay but there are different ways to conduct business and if you're going to shame people 
for buying long tail items, this is not the channel for you. I'm I'm sorry. Like I'm I don't sell high th sell through rate stuff. If if I if I have high set if I have what I perceive to be uh, an extremely unique item, if I think I can sell it local, it's going up local first. It's not going on eBay. eBay to me is the place for long tail items. eBay is the place where I store my items virtually all in one place, the things that I want to list on eBay. So I'm never going to fit in the perceived most successful selling box that, that you that you put yourself in. It's just, it's not going to happen. Biff, Biff Boffo says, if you sell a Scooby-Doo lunchbox, you will get traffic from people who search Scooby-Doo lunchbox. That will not be as many people who who search Pokemon video games. Sell-through rate doesn't matter. Uh, let's see here. Happy to be here says, well, you are still wrong. It, it is eBay matching buyer intent. Not all buyers are looking for your fast sell-through wonderful stuff. It is up to sellers to use keywords that match buyer's intent, period. Guessing keywords and using description words is over. Some brands will always sell faster than others. Some sellers don't have sourcing for all brands. We sell what we can get. That's an excellent point. I bought a bunch of very obscure uh, Japanese plush today because there's a large Asian population in Vancouver and I have access to that stuff and I actually enjoy selling that kind of things. Uh, are they are they sell-through rate? Well, high sell-through rate stuff? Probably not, but they're very unique and I'll probably do well with them. Uh, Nash says, try listing five try listing five brand new Lulu Lululemon shorts all in slightly different shades of view, view bl shades of blue. After a few days, some of the shorts will get 50 views and the others will get zero. So that makes me think that they won't let you sell so many iPhones. In fact, eBay has admitted based on their growth responsibility program. Yeah, I mean, that this is an excellent point too. Like they're only going to let you, uh, if they don't restrict your account, they're going to restrict your account from, from, from uh, you know, growing too fast. That, that's that's, a, that's a, the law of eBay's uh, site. Benny Stratton. The old standard of a 90-day sell-through being acceptable is dead. That is your opinion because you want a quick sale. eBay was never about a quick sale. Sellers from the old school had what is called patience. And we listed and we listed and we listed uh, hundreds and thousands, no matter what the sell-through rate is. Eventually it sold, period, in the story. This is fact. And there's no debating that cool so, uh, sell-through rate is all about opinion. If you want a quick sale, true, sell, sell faster selling items. If you do not care about how fast an item sells, then as a seller, you care less about the sell-through rate. It could sell tomorrow. If It could sell a year from now. It could sell 10 years from now. You and all the others that are hard up on high sell-through rate need to stop. Okay. Um, I want to create a store that has unique items. And so if someone is searching for, for these kinds of certain items, they'll, they'll be interested in these other sorts of interesting items as well. I try, I try to focus on raising my average uh, shipment total. That, that, that's, just, that's the way my mind works. That's how I, I find that I'm able to sell items that most people pass over at garage sales because they don't see any value in them or they don't think anybody's going to want them. But if, but if, if you have a destination store, uh, people will come if your items aren't hidden. Rin says, you're talking to a wall. It's not worth your time. This guy, this guy, th this guy. Sorry, there's a, there's a little gnat flying around. This guy admitted in the last video he doesn't check sell-through rates. Yeah, I don't. And buys what he thinks is cool. You're saying that like that's a, that's a bad thing. Like I'm not supposed to enjoy the items that I buy. My theory is... My thought process is if I think something is cool, someone else is going to think it's cool. And I've been running with that ever since I started reselling. And it's served me quite well. So I'm not going to stop. <clears throat> then complains, well, I'm actually not complaining anymore. Uh, I'm diversifying. Uh, right now I have, I don't know if I have three or four eBay sales and I have four local sales. That's diversification. That's adapting. 
Uh, 10, 10 sales a day is what I want to get. I'm probably not going to get them on eBay, although there was a couple days in the very short, like in the last week where I did almost, I think I did 12 or 11 on one day on eBay, and uh, I think I got nine uh, on another day. So I'm not complaining. Uh, I, I have been concerned and frustrated and annoyed about the platform over the last year, but I'm getting over that. So I don't know what videos you've been watching as of recent. Like, uh, we're all allowed opportunities uh, to vent. Uh, that's what eBay is. And, and this has been like the year of venting. Uh, and when he does no research with the tools provided to him on what items sell. I then complain that his items don't sell when he does no research with the tools provided to him. Um, I don't. I don't tell you how to resell, so don't tell me how to resell. I don't know what tools you're 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 saying is provided to me. I don't need those tools. I have experience. I've been doing this. I've been part of reselling all my life, ever since I was in elementary school. So I'm good. I'm good, bro. Um, you're absolutely right in your statement, but they don't want solutions. They want to alleviate themselves of all personal accountability. Uh, not true. If sales are limited, their iPhones would not sell. They don't buy high sell-through rate items. They don't research and just complain for over a year now. The title is insane. A grown adult stating that you should accept that you have no control over your life, over your own life on a sales platform is so childish. I'm sorry. I, I, I feel that that is a, uh, per, that's not clickbait. It's a very accurate, accurate title. We have no control. We have some control. But ultimately, we work for eBay. eBay owns us. The sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll be better off as a reseller. You will be a better reseller. You'll be better off as a reseller by diversifying and not having all your eggs in one basket. I, this year has been an eye-opener for me when it, when, it, when it comes to that. And I still see signs that... Uh, like we had somebody in the community, in, in this community that had his account uh, shut down with eBay. He, he was able to get it back up and running. Uh, but you have no, con you really have no control over, over your eBay sales. You, like, again, you have some control. Cole says, uh, he, Cole's agree. And so the, these two, uh, I think, Oh, agreed. I can say with certainty that in-demand items priced at or just below market value sell great. I am a part-time seller in my, my first full year of selling. I've never had over 50 items in my store and I do $250,000 in sales this year. I passed 100000 a couple weeks ago. I only buy items I know will sell fast. I work three hours a day or less. It's 98% sourcing. I'm happy for you. I feel like you should start your own YouTube channel. You should, and then you should create a course that teaches people how to, to find high sell-through rate because if you're doing that great, that's great. I don't know why you're here. I don't know what, what value you're getting from me. You're not gonna source the things I'm sourcing. And part of the reason I source the things I source is because most people won't do that. And most people won't take the time to build up a store of what I have. <clears throat> if I give out, if I'm only sourcing high sell through rate items and I'm giving out my secrets and everyone then goes out and buys those same high sell through rate items, well, pretty soon they're not going to be high sell through rate items. And to be honest with you, if everybody started selling high sell through rate items, they wouldn't be high sell through rate items. So you... Cole Williams should be very happy that I source and I sell what I sell because I'm not I'm not your competitor. Nash says, with that math, why don't you work 12 hours per day and make a million so you can afford your own Boeing one-way ticket to the eBay Apologist Island? <laughs> so, you know, when I when I read this thread, I was gonna like, I was gonna you know respond, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna save it for a video because. Just like uh, Rin says that 
Cole and Ren are wasting their time on me. They are. They are wasting my time on me. I'm not going to change. Um, I'm going to adapt and I'm going to sell my stuff in other places. And that's okay. It's okay. And, and, and I wish you guys all the luck. I just, for the life of me, I don't know why you guys are hanging out here. If you clearly uh, are offended by my style of reselling. Okay. Story time. Story time. I'm going to omit the names of, of this buyer and this seller, but we all know them. Uh, they're in the community. Um, so this one buyer, I'm just trying to think, how, how do I want to tell this story? I'm not very good at telling stories. It's kind of shocking that I even have a YouTube channel. Um, somebody wanted to support uh, an, another, another reseller. So they bought something from their store, another another person's store. And the buyer had made a mental note that there were, sorry, I was reading something. Uh, the buyer had made a mental note that they, 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 they bought something, but then there was another item that they saw that they liked. Now the seller, when they received the order, contacted the buyer and was like, oh, uh, you have a potential refund coming because the shipping and handling didn't didn't quite convert right or something like that. So the buyer then was like, oh, awesome. I'm going to go buy that other thing that I saw that I wanted. Couldn't find it. Could not find it in the store. And 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 the buyer's, excuse me, the buyer's store is, is pretty small. So it, it wouldn't take long to actually go through the store and find it. So the buyer thought, well, maybe, you know, the the seller was doing a, a reset or, um, yeah, they just, they couldn't figure out why they couldn't find this item. Like they looked through the whole, the whole store and yeah, it wasn't there. And, and eventually something happened that it, it did turn up. But it got it got me it got me thinking. It got me. Uh, so I, I was I was speaking with the person who owns uh, who owns the store, and and we were talking back and forth. And and we all know that there is the uh, the the discrepancy between your active listings in your seller hub, and when you go and you view your page stores inside the little search box, it says search all. So for example, I've got like thirty seven twenty one in my active listings. But when you go and you look at my store, it's only showing like 36, 64, something like that. It's missing like somewhere south of 70 items. Where are they? I don't know. Uh, but, but, uh, we do have some information. Um, the, the seller contacted an eBay customer service rep. And I'm going to read to you. the uh the response so uh this this uh, and 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 the person who buys and the person who sells i know both personally um so these are not just like some complete randos uh so so the seller said that they had contacted ebay and this is the so wanting to kind of know uh about this or or what eBay has to say about this. Thank you for for verifying your account, account. Upon checking, I am not seeing an error report, so it is most likely working as designed at the store. Typically runs off best match algorithm and doesn't show all available listings all the time. I hope that helps to clarify. Now we're not talking about search here. We're talking about your store, like your little corner, your little nook of eBay, the the nook and the the the, uh, the corner where you house your items virtually. It is a store that you pay for in a monthly fee. You pay to have this store. You pay to have your items, and if if you're if you, our store and allots us x amount of listings that we can put on our store so 
what this particular customer service rep is saying The store typically runs off best match algorithm and doesn't show all available listings all the time. I have never heard that. Not only that, like I, I, I cannot, I can understand that it's eBay's kind of like right to not show items in search when they don't want to or when they don't feel that it's a good match. Like that, I understand. I don't particularly love it if somebody's actually searching for what I was looking for. In fact, the other day, I was comping something at uh, a thrift store. I used Google Lens and, I, and, and then identified it and it found an eBay listing, it took me to that listing. I then copied the title of that listing and then went into my app ebay app and put that exact same listing in there and it could not it, it it did not recognize it it could not find that exact title that was word for word of what the title is now to me that's inexcusable if you if you're searching the exact title what is the point like don't even call it search call it ask ebay like ask jeeves it, it shouldn't be search. It's, they should call it Ask eBay. Like, eBay, this is what I'm looking for. Just let me know what you think I should buy and I'll buy it. In fact, just... I'm going to type in what I want. <laughs> this is the future of eBay right here. I just, I've seen it. I type in men's black cardigan, size large. And then it just goes out and buys it for you. It, you doesn't. You don't even get to see. It's like a surprise. I mean, that's actually kind of a. That would actually be kind of a fun little service. Like maybe not. Maybe not quite like that. But um, anyhow. But that, that ask eBay. Ask eBay. It's not search anymore. If you're searching for the exact title of what somebody's listing is and and you can't find it, it's actually. And I've said this before, it's actually better and easier and more accurate and effective to use Google Lens to find an eBay listing. That should never happen. Not when you're searching on the very platform's Ask eBay engine. A-E-E. -E. A-E-E -E engine. No, A-E-E. -E. Ask eBay engine. Yeah. Yeah. So when you type in blah, 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 blah in A-E-E... -E, Oh man. Uh all right. Now. Um so we got to talk in me, me and me and this particular seller and uh and then they did a little bit more research on the thinker uh, so I'm kind of getting off track a little bit now because let me know what you guys think about that. Would you be mad or upset or feel slighted if you listed a thousand items in your store and only 950 of them were actually shown. It's like if you if you had a neighbor who wanted to look through your eBay store, so you go to Bob, your neighbor's Bob, by the way, say, hey, Bob, I think you're going to like my eBay store. Go check it out and buy something from me. Um, and so Bob's like, OK, how many how many listings do you got? Uh, and I said, I have a thousand listings you can go through. OK, great. I want to go through a thousand listings. <clears throat> comes back bob comes back um you only have like 950 listings what happened to the other 50 i don't know they should be there i don't know <laughs> so you just wasted your time listing 50 items i mean you're literally driving traffic to your store and they're only seeing 95 percent of your available listings um i don't know that doesn't sit well with me what do you guys think do you is, is it are these discrepancies happening to you like i kind of feel like this is something that we should be asking eBay. <laughs> asking actual eBay, not the search engine, ask eBay. Uh, so, all right, so I'm going to read to you uh, an instant message that I got from the seller that we were just talking about. Uh, I've been meaning to read the uh, terms of service and just got started. So I found this, which addresses whether seller feedback matters to listing vi visibility. 
So we're moving on to a different title uh, topic here. We strive to create, so this is eBay. We strive to create a marketplace where buyers find, this is from the terms of service, where buyers find what they are looking for. Actually, I would disagree with that. It should be more like, we strive to create a marketplace where buyers can find what we think that they would like to buy based on their search criteria. Therefore, the appearance or placement of listings in search and browse result will depend on a variety of factors, including but not limited to buyer's location, search query, browsing site and history, browsing site and history, items location, listing format, listing format, price and shipping costs, terms of service and time, History and relevance to the user query. Seller's history, including listing practices, detailed seller ratings, eBay policy compliant, feedback, feedback, and defect rate, and number of listings matching the buyer's query. So anytime you hear an, e an eBay representative saying the feedback doesn't matter, you can now say it says so in the terms of service. In fact, in fact, I will cut and paste this in the item description so you can look at it, look at it yourself. More in here, uh, here, here's uh, more interesting terms of service ver verbiage. To drive a positive user experience, a listing may not appear in some search and browse results regardless of the sort order chosen by the buyer. Some advanced listing upgrades will only be visible on some of our services. And then they were saying, so feedback does affect visibility or it can. When I ask customer service about feedback, they surely say it doesn't matter. Your, it doesn't affect your metrics. Metrics aren't the same as listing visibility. That's number one. Number two, I don't see anything in a thinker, in terms of something in a thinkorswim. That's a, that's a, that's a trading platform that I used to use. Uh, terms of service that says all listings in the eBay store are visible. I don't see anything in the terms of service that says all listings in the eBay store are visible. Just eBay stating that they don't necessarily ever need to make listings vis visibility. So this, per this person was saying uh, that they think it means no matter what we pay for a store subscription, visibility is totally up to eBay and the stores regardless. Going So now let's tie it all back to what I was saying in the beginning. In my last video, you have no control over your store. You have no control over your eBay sales. You have no control whether or not someone can even see your eBay items for sale. So those are just facts. Those are just facts. Do I seem upset? Do I seem upset? No, I'm not upset. I'm only just reporting this. I want you guys to tell me what you think about this information. <laughs> Let's get to some what solds. Okay, this is we're we're gonna do this pretty fast, uh, and I want to start. I don't remember exactly where we were, but I want to start with uh, this particular shirt. Dixon, I sold this Dixon flannel shirt for it was twenty eight plus shipping. I actually paid. I paid up for this a little bit. Uh, I paid seven dollars for this. Uh, that's actually a lot for my for my cost of goods. The reason I did it is this particular thrift store they had a ton of these. I did it on a Friday, and I thought, okay, if I can sell this over the weekend and get a decent price, I might come back and just buy all of these. And if I mean, I will pay up for something if I if I think that it's gonna sell no matter what. They were brand new without tags. Uh, they still had like the collar thing in there. And um, so this is a two extra large. So I'm a, I have a question for you uh, clothing sellers out there. They had three and four and five X large. Now I know like extra large and 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 two extra large are, are pretty good sellers. 
um, are are the three and the four and the five X's worth worth it? I don't even know if they still have it. I was there. I was actually at this thrift store today, and um, <laughs> I feel so dirty about something that I bought. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, you'll you'll see it at some time. Uh, just remember, I, I bought something today that um, it, it's not a massager. I will say that. Uh, but uh, anyhow, they, they, they changed the layout of the store and I kind of had my hands full with the things I was buying. So I just kind of, I didn't look around and see if they still had them. But my question is, would you, is it worth buying 3X, 4X? Like what's the limit that, it, you know, at some point it's like, okay, the, the amount of people that can wear these are so small. And um, look at me, look at me doing, doing measurements here. I don't even know if this is the right way. I just thought, I don't know, is this? Is this the right way? Like, do you measure here to here and from here to here? I don't know. I'm just, I, yeah, I felt like a, a seamstress doing doing this. So, yeah, let me know in the comment section about uh, the that size and if it's, if it's worth it for me to go pick them up. All right, this is Paul Pope. Let me get my trusty thing. It sold for 25 shipped. This Aloha hat I just showed you guys. Uh, I picked it up. Only a couple weeks went by. That sold for 23, uh, 23 shipped. That was a high seltzer rate item. Look at me. Look at me, Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> oh, if you, if any of you in the uh, they're in the Primo chat, you'll understand that that joke. I'm I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. Uh, I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. Oh, my goodness. Um, Scooby-Doo uh, comic set. I think there was three different covers. Sold for 26 ship. This was a cancellation. He bought it. He messaged me back. And um, this was annoying on one day. I had, like, I was having, like, really, really horrid sales. And, like, the one thing that somebody buys, and I go, I package it up, get a label on it, and then they cancel. Oh, so annoying. Says he bought it by mistake. Uh, Mad Max, uh, two, two, um, two comic set lot for, uh, two, 32 shipped. Uh, this Nike Air Jordan, uh, hoodie, uh, this, I, I didn't pay anything for this. This was a, this was a, uh, a freebie, uh, that sold for 67 plus shipping. This is actually a pretty good one to look out for. Uh, cool gray elephant print. I mean, <laughs> to me. Ah, this thing is hideous, but uh, this is this is the beauty that we all like different things. Uh, no measurements on this. Do you guys measure jackets? I just feel like a large is a large, and oh well. Uh, this was like a five, maybe it's like a seven uh, comic set of the X Men Origin series. Each one has a different uh, X Men or villain on there. Uh, those sold for fifty seven shipped. Uh, this would have been a nice sale if the if the buyer had actually paid, he canceled on this one as well. Uh, I mean, different different buyer canceled. And then he leaves me positive feedback. Great experience. I really wanted to comment and say, it would have been great if you paid for your item. Uh, this Nike shirt, this was uh, another freebie. Uh, 26 ship. This was a, uh, a 23 comic lot of this uh, Hate by Peter ba Bag, Big, Boggy. Um, man, I paid peanuts for these. At a, I think I, I think I paid a quarter a piece for these at a thrift store. I mean, at a, at a con. And I was just like, I, I saw them. And then I'm like, eh. And then I looked, I, I walked away. And then I was like sh shopping some more. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and buy those. I'm like, I, I know those will sell. And they sold for, um, 56 plus shipping. Sold another Spud, 27 shipped. Uh, this was a, this is such a good example of, I mean, I, I don't even know, I don't even know, know where I got this. I probably paid next to nothing, or maybe this wasn't a lot that I bought. But these, these two old, um, like, mas like they're, they're like on reflexology and massage. I mean, I probably could have, I could probably could have lauded this up with a couple of massagers and, and gotten that, you know, two hundred bucks for that. <laughs> these two old books sold for thirty three. Uh, $33 plus shipping. Be on the lookout. Stories the feet can tell. <laughs> oh, 
probably never find one again, and that's okay. Uh, Scooby-Doo VHS sold for 26 shipped. This Goran Brothers hat sold for um, b -b -b 25 plus shipping. I just wanted that gone. I, I Maybe that wasn't the best buy. Sold this. Uh, you guys know about that and that. Um, I talked about it in one of the previous videos. And I think I talked about that. But that sold for $16 shipped. Uh, this comic journal uh, paid a dollar for this at a thrift store. That sold for $27 plus shipping. Uh, this Revenge of the Monolith graphic novel. Uh, this is an early, some people say, the first appearance of Apocalypse in comics. Uh, that sold for 60 plus shipping. Heavy Metal sold for 17 sh plus shipping. Uh, this this guy bought this Daredevil poster for 17 shipped. And then I upsold him on these Spider-Man. So let's show you. I got, um, I had to leave shortly to go pick up Maria. And right when I got home, uh, somebody locally wants this. It's like a like you put light bulbs in there you plug it in and like some you can either attach it to someone it's for like uh, for film or for like well not just for film but for like just having light and it does work uh i listed this for 25 dollars locally i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna list it on ebay it's just it's too big it's too i mean it's just bulky and and i i think for what they're worth i think i priced it pretty fairly um I'm actually taking that to uh, somebody messaged me and, and what did they say? They said, um, they're doing a film right now and they need that. How cool is that? Uh, when I get there, I'm going to ask them, I'm going to ask them which, uh, so before I go get Maria, I got to drop that off, make that sale and then do the, uh, the buttons and the new kids on the block hat. Um, that guy re repeat local buyer. Uh, so yeah, so I've got four sales local and there's still, there's still time left in the day. Uh, so that was a garage sale find. Uh, and that has been in my, in my studio upstairs since last summer. And I just got around to listing it. It's not even been listed a week. Uh, a little, a little trick is to put, uh, not a trick. Well, maybe it's not really even applicable, but I put like movie props in in my uh, in my title um a couple things that i wanted to talk, just a couple observations i noticed uh, i had listed like i had two lots of immortal hulk uh, comics they took me a long time to create the listings and take a picture not a long time one of them just went missing like it was no longer there like i had to i had to redo the listing it was just it got deleted and i'm not doing resets right now i actually i, I i'm in the camp right now that resets are, resets are actually hurting stores right now and i don't have any proof of that but i think if you do a certain percentage of your stores and especially if you don't make any changes and I don't really think even like making a small percent change either way up or down or I think you got to like fix the title. I think you need to like uh, do small amounts, uh, fix the title, maybe the description or I think there's things that you need to do. Like that's just that's just my opinion right now. Um, I wanted to give you a tip for Facebook Marketplace. I've talked about in the past about how uh you, the AI, the AI can flag certain things inside uh, on the listings. I, this is what I have found. I say as little as possible in the ads now, and I find that to work very effectively. Uh, the AI can, like, it, the less you say, the less can be used against you. I guess is the best way to to put it that way. Um, I haven't, I haven't had an item flagged for a long time. And, you know, I just, I just say very, very little in my listings. And, and then, and then once somebody expresses interest in it, if there's any flaws, I can, I can let them know there, or I can answer any questions that they have inside the chat. Uh, I just think as long as there's nobody to talk to with Mar Facebook marketplace and it's all, it's all AI it's it's too easy to get too many kind of like violation policy violations or perceived policy violations 
so yeah. I would recommend doing, you know, a lot of people say that coupons don't do anything and and I mean I would I would say they don't do anything except for one thing. They give you a little bit of little visibility boost in the like in the like a little coupon i mean I've, i don't think i've ever sold anything from a coupon but at least it's something that the buyer's eye is drawn to i would say do coupons for that one purpose and who knows maybe it does something behind the scenes uh, let me know your thoughts yeah i think that's all i think we're good feed that youtube ag uh, algo feed that youtube algo thanks for watching if you stuck around this long if you're still here uh you're probably a big supporter of the channel i greatly appreciate it i do appreciate everybody as well uh do all the things peace and blessings guys cheers hey guys the video should have already been uploaded i don't know it's too long go figure so there's about nine minutes of what sold it's gonna go on the next video it's gonna we're gonna start on that so I don't know well, if YouTube's trying to tell me something about making long videos or what. So I need to edit those out, re-upload, re-render, re-edit so I can get this video out tonight.